Greetings. This week we're going to do a bog standard budget food week. We're not going to have a theme. I am going to aim to spend £15 on my weekly shop and not buy anything else for the entire week. Let's see how I get on. Hello, day one, and I'm starting the day with a breakfast of leftover fake lamb meatballs, some mushrooms, some feta cheese and some cucumber. This was absolutely delicious and I am enjoying the savoury breakfast. So for lunch, I thought I would whip up some flatbreads using some buckwheat flour that I've got. I just added some baking powder and some water and fried these little guys up. And I am going to make that beautiful aubergine dip that I had last week, which was part of Greek week. But it was so delicious. I really, really fancied it today and had an aubergine left over. So what more could I do but roast this little guy, add everything into a blender with some tahini, some onions, some parsley, salt and pepper. And here we are doesn't look so appetizing but it's beautiful it tastes gorgeous so aromatic and that bread is delightful have you ever tried making your own bread so much better than buying it from the shop mine occasionally is a little bit raw inside but hey what's a little bit of raw bread between good youtube friends it's my little slow-mo picture at the end as per Right, so we're going to begin the £100 a month challenge. Here I am at my local ATM having a wonderful time. Look at the state of this screen. It needs a clean immediately. I guess nobody cleans them. Here we go, £100 in cash to last me the month. Just wanted to point out how beautiful these little daffodils are. I love spring. My supermarket of choice today is Morrison's. This is the little Morrison's near my house. It is a bit more expensive than the big Tesco, but I just couldn't face big Tesco on a Sunday. It's just going to be rammed. So Morrison's it is. 70p for these four baked potatoes. Yes, please get in my belly. Potatoes are a staple of my diet. They are a whole food, as long as you don't do too much jiggery pokery with them. Now, it is three o'clock, so I'm expecting some yellow tickets, but we shall see as we go around the store. Firstly, we're going to pop some little banana -y guys in there. These courgettes, I went for a huge one. <laughs> no pun intended. But that was quite expensive. I think £1.70 in the end. £1.09 for some wonky pears. Just fancy some fruit. These were quite low value. And I needed some extra basil. So we got that too. Coriander, I got yellow ticket. Lovely job. Got myself some chickpeas. 50p or 49p officially. And two of these tinned tomatoes, 35p each. Thank you. Got some yellow ticket bargains at long last. Some bread that I'm going to free. So I got a little rye bread for about 60p. There was another little wholemeal there. I think that was 90p. This pumpernickel, ninkle, pumpernickel, pumpernickel bread. Half price. Never had it before. These chicken fillets. My best friend told me to get them because they're £4 something. 4 75 I want to say, for a kilogram. So if I'm having 100 grams a day, that's 47p per portion. Went for a lime just because I love this in a beverage. And I went for one of those grapefruits. Here's Jack having a little tin of treat food that i bought him he only ate the jelly why do i bother 70p wasted anyway there he is asleep whilst we're watching a woody allen film what a sunday so all in all my haul came to the grand total of 15 pounds just over 15 pounds if i hadn't got the little tin of treat cat food it would have been under 15 pounds so not bad for all that, considering also I got that chicken. Trying to incorporate a little bit more meat into my diet, even though it's expensive. I think pound per pound, the chicken's going to be good. So this is a bark made out of protein, powder, yoghurt and some fruit. Apparently you freeze it for a couple of hours, break it up into bits and then you've got a protein rich, healthy snack. So that's the consistency before it's gone into the freezer. We're going to freeze it overnight. Quick bit of prep because it's day one. I've got some sweet potatoes from the fridge, the baking potatoes I bought, and a butternut squash. A butternut squash even. 
from the fridge and we're going to roast those. On to dinner, I want some pasta. By the way, I did whip up some bread earlier when I was making those flatbreads. I also did a little loaf. Very, very dense of buckwheat, but hey, it will do. This is the pesto. How wonderful is that looking? I've got some super cheap spaghetti from the cupboard on the go. Now, those frozen chicken breasts are obviously still frozen. So I have got some pre-cooked stuff that I got for Jack because I'm going to steal some. 51 grams, to be precise. Sorry, Jack. hope you don't mind. But you can have some of the fresh chicken once it's cooked. We'll do an exchange. So that went in the pan with some olive oil, salt, pepper, lemon juice, garlic powder. Delish. I grated some lemon over the top and added some extra olive oil. Look how wonderful this is. This is wonderful. I'm eating like a queen on a budget. So yeah, we're thinking 40, 7p for the chicken, homemade pesto, cheap as chip spaghetti, lovely old job. Day one, I'm pleased with that. Day two, and let's check out this protein bark that has been freezing overnight. I probably could have done a bit thicker base, but hey-ho, um, I wanted to spread it out. I ended up watering down the Greek yoghurt, so next time I don't think I'm going to do that. But overall, impressed with this. Not overly sweet. I think I need to work on the flavour here. I've got in some protein powder, which was like, a, I think, a Malteser flavour. Um, with some frozen banana. Anyway, as you can see, I've cracked it all up into bits and refreezing it. On to breakfast. So one of my best friends, Katie, brought me over this homemade whole food walnut cake. And I'm thinking, let's do a breakfast out of it with a bit of yogurt and banana. I sliced it up. It's looking great. Moist. Smells delicious. Going to microwave that up just for a couple of seconds load it up with the yogurt and banana and sprinkle over some nuts this was a heavenly breakfast i also drizzled on some honey thank you so much for the addition of the cake so then the other day i foraged some cleavers and i've been drying them out so i thought i'm going to try them with some tea and it was very lovely i sweetened it with some natural stevia on to lunch so i am going to make a soup i've got some chicken that is a mixture of butternut squash and sweet potato i'm chucking in some paprika also some sumac i'm going to fry up the seeds as well nothing wasted in this household and i'm gonna use those to make like a crunchy little topping in goes some sweet corn from the freezer that's been in there ages so that can come out now and go into my belly and here we are, the completed chicken, butternut squash and sweet potato soup with a little bit of my original homemade buckwheat bread. What do you think of this one, guys? Would you eat this? I threw in some basil for some colour and because I had them in the fridge, I wanted to use them up. I added a little bit of, I think it's date syrup to those seeds. Very nice. And then for dinner, I had some leftovers. I had some of those leftovers um, chicken pasta. Day three, and it's a full day of leftovers. I start off with my leftover meatballs, which I heated up in the microwave. Had it with some cucumber, tomato, tiny bit of chicken and some olives and a little bit of my homemade bread. This was absolutely delicious. And I'm really starting to get used to savoury things in the morning now. Not always having sweet. For lunch, I had a leftover chicken pesto spaghetti. And then for dinner, I had leftover corn and sweet corn and sweet potato and butternut squash soup with some more bread. Highly delicious. Me and Jack are going to go to bed now. 
day four and it's time to start cooking some stuff. So I've got some frozen chicken breast in this little bowl. I've added some water and some rice and some jerk seasoning plus a tomato and some red peppers I had in the fridge. So the idea around this concoction is that I'm going to put it in the oven and roast it in one pot to make some kind of jerk paella, that sort of vibe. This is smelling absolutely delicious. Jerk is not really a spice that I use very much, but look at all of the amazing stuff that's actually in this. Can you read that? There's like cumin, thyme, garlic, onion, turmeric. Just so aromatic and amazing. So I've got some leftovers. So I earlier in the week, I made this aubergine moussaka and I had some meatballs left but they were actually fake meatballs lentils and mushrooms so I sort of bunged it all in a pot also had some aubergine dip in there and then I peeled some pre-roasted sweet potato that I had in the fridge and also I had pre-roasted this butternut squash so scoop that out I'm going to keep that actually that's not going in the recycling and I've got a little bake pretty amazing out of leftovers look at that so both of these guys have gone into the oven. Also, in terms of leftovers, I pulled this out of the freezer yesterday. It was the cacao nibs and cashew mixture that I had made. It's kind of feeling a bit biscuity, so I'm thinking some kind of cheesecake. So I've patted it into this bowl. I've got a little bit of green yogurt left. So I'm thinking let's try and thicken it up with some chia seeds. Nope. Oh. It's going to go in here and I've got some date syrup here trying to make the concoction a bit darker to look chocolatey. Now at this stage I wish I'd put a load of cocoa powder in to make it super chocolatey but hey it ended up being this consistency and this colour so I simply spread that over the top of the cashew and cocoa nib or cacao nib, however we're pronouncing it, mixture. Is this looking like a cheesecake of sorts? Obviously, it's a very healthy version with no sugar, no added sugar, I should say. There's probably sugar in the yogurt, but not, but naturally forming. I did find some cocoa powder, so I just sprinkled it over the top. It was in my coffee bar area. What an idiot, should have put that all in and mixed it up. Never mind, here we are. So back to my rice. I've pulled it out after a little bit of baking. It's not done. It's obviously still quite thin. The rice isn't really cooked. And I'm feeling I need to add some chopped tomatoes in there for a bit more colour. So chopped tomatoes have gone in and that's going to go back in the oven. Meanwhile, I added the last of my feta cheese to this bake and roasted it for another five minutes. And look at this, glorious. Bubbling away like an absolute good one. Smelled amazing. And let me tell you, it tasted amazing as well. So after all that cooking, I needed a quick breakfast because I had some meetings. I was running late. I grabbed this, off I went. So I came back for lunch and had some of that bake with some green beans from the freezer. Absolutely wonderful. What do you think? Would you eat this? essentially mushrooms and aubergine bake and I had three portions left which was lovely so this is how my rice came out in the end after being baked and I used some of it to stuff that leftover butternut squash carcass I just had to show you this lovely little picture of my jack sitting on my office chair so for dinner I had the butternut squash incredible probably should have just had half of this with some more greens but i didn't i ate the whole thing and then for dessert of course some of that cheesecake concoction with extra date syrup and some seeds on the top and some cocoa powder delicious a great day in the budget kitchen Greetings, very little to report for days five and six, essentially living on leftovers. So ate all of the three portions of this lovely bake that I had created over the course of those two days. And for breakfast, I was just yamming in some of that 
homemade cheesecakey mousse thing that I made. So I did eat all of the leftovers up. The only thing I didn't really eat was that rice, the tomato we baked rice that was in the in the oven. It just didn't hold very well in my fridge. It didn't look very appetising, so essentially just lived on these. Also, as an aside, I had to take Jack to the vet. He'd done something to his paw, and it turned out he had half yanked out one of his claws. So here he is, looking very sorry for himself on the sofa. It is officially day seven, and I've just eaten leftovers for the last couple of days. And I'm so excited about doing a food shop today. So I thought we'll just start day seven by doing a bit of an audit of what we've got left in the cupboards. We have a very exciting week ahead for next week. More will be revealed, won't it, Jack? Yes, it will. Let's get down to business on this audit. So fruit-wise, I have got three pears and three bananas left, which is not too shabby at all. Slimmer pickings definitely in the fridge. We have got some rice, which I don't think is edible. It all looks gloopy, and I'll probably get a stomachache in that. So leftover rice, that's unfortunately got to go. Got a few bits of spring onion, which is grown in my garden. A tiny little bit of lentils from a can. And some herbs that have seen better days in there and a little bit of lime. So I don't think I can make a meal out of that so far. What's this? This is a courgette. Still got loads of that courgette left. Cucumber, I have eaten a bit out of that. You can see the teeth marks. And then some very sorry for themselves mushrooms and some onions. Here I've got my usual mustard, I've got some, this is miso paste, that pickle that I made, um, I've got no milk left, not a lot. I think there's more going on in this freezer, let's have a quick look. I've got a few peas there, bearing in mind I have to make a Mother's Day lunch tomorrow, they'll probably be using that. Some sweet corn, some prawns, I might use tonight that is some fish stew mediterranean fish stew that's been in my fridge for ages is it still edible who knows and there's another fish stew those are green beans and here what's here summer fruits lovely job there's jack overseeing proceedings flicking a bit of ice about and that is cabbage what are you doing down there mate you flicking it. You're not going to get that out there now, are you? What do you do? He is the love of my life. Look how sh shiny his coat is. Does that feel like such a proud mum? Okay, an old ready meal. It's a hot pot. Goodness knows when I'm going to eat that. The bread that I bought, yellow tickets. That's the pumpernickel. I've got a rye and then um, a sliced whole meal, which is that. I actually need to get a few... Slice out of that. Some more sweet corn. I've got tons of sweet corn. What's going on? Some carrots and some cauliflower rice and some broccoli. Really, I could live like a queen out of the freezer, I think. Maybe I'll do that the week after next. I've got a plan for next week. Some frozen pasta, just plain. That is a frozen bolognese. Look, rank. That is a ready meal. And in there are my frozen chicken breasts. I'm going to take three of those for the Mother's Day lunch tomorrow. And there's some veg. And here's my beautiful boy. I actually had that grapefruit last night and it made my lips burn. Even though it was very tasty. It burnt half my face off. So audit of the cupboards. Still plenty, plenty of carbs, pulses in there. And that's my condiment cupboard. So I'm just going to nosh this banana down. As you can see, I've taken four of those slices of frozen wholemeal bread out. And two of the onions because I'm going to make a stuffing for tomorrow's Mother's Day lunch. But onward to these very sad looking mushrooms. I've got a tiny bit of sauerkraut left. The lentils. Some herbs. I don't think I'm going to use the herbs though. And some courgette. And an onion, onion, onion. So we're going to chop up the mushrooms and the onion. And they're going to go into a pan. Now I'm going to go and try and craft some kind of chutney out of that sweet stuff that's all boiling away in the pan 
I think I put some garlic and some paprika in with the mushrooms as well. And this is how it turned out. Put a little bit of hot sauce in. Actually quite a good breakfast. Very filling. What do you think? Would you eat this? Kind of a hash. With a bit of fruit chutney on the top. And the obligatory slow-mo close-up. I have got a few bits of that veg left, so I'm going to add some of that miso paste in with some soup mix grains that I've got in the cupboard. And we are going to make up a soup for later because no doubt I'm going to be hungry at lunchtime today once I get back from the shoppy shops. That is smelling absolutely gorgeous. I thought best put some protein in. So I now have one of those chicken breasts, frying half up for Jack and half for the soup. And there it is in its glory. Look at that. That is a chicken and vegetable bean soup with miso in it. Would you eat that? I cannot wait to have seconds of that. I've got quite a lot left. Well, what a week. I did manage to survive on a £15 weekly shop. I didn't buy any more food, which I am impressed with. And I did eke out pretty much all of the stuff that I had in my fridge. I've only got half a courgette left in my fridge. So I would definitely say that was a huge success. I feel like I am fast becoming known as the leftover queen because all I tend to eat are leftovers, but hey. As per, if you want to catch up with all my videos once a week, make sure you subscribe, because otherwise you might miss one. Can't have that, can we? Hope you have a lovely week and speak to you next time.